say hello to Lumberjack Plaid. Welcome now, home. Lumberjack Plaid, I, I just love this color. It is a strong crimson red, is what I would say. It's inspired by the woven aesthetics of a timeless tartan. We do love tartan. a good tartan around here, a good plaid. Uh, and the truth of the matter, when it came to red, this is just one of those colors that I think at first glance or first appearance, especially because you're gonna be seeing it on, on a video, on a screen of some sort, don't underestimate the power of this color. Truth be told, this color has been two years in development, two years with Ranger. Why? Well, because you'll see when I go through the, the swatches that there are a lot of reds in distress and you think, do I really need this other red? Well, I think any maker that's had it, anyone that has seen it in real life will say that would be yes. And the reason is, is because it is different than any other red that's in the line. It's not just a tone up. It's not just this. It is a red that actually didn't exist in the line of the distress. And for good reason, we couldn't really find a colorant that would achieve this color dry dry is going to be the important factor, uh, how you see this color and also wick out without turning into a hot pink or a crazy magenta. All right. That's really what it is. I think that lumberjack plaid is perfect for the holiday season. So again, thank you Ranger for getting this color out in time. I mean, I, I it won't, I, as you know, we've been kind of working on deadlines from launching seasonal distress with Halloween and Christmas, and then following up with a new color so soon, but it was like, this is the red for the holiday making season. It really needed to, to be here. So the, the greatest thing I think uh, about this color that I'm really excited about is as always, it comes in all the different mediums and you're going to see from the swatches and the samples that I share with you, uh, that especially something like the glaze, really happy about having that, that deep red. And it's funny because people said, Oh, I, I really wish there was, um, a true red, a real red, a, a right red, uh, a nice red, and all of those things. Uh, but really, it is red, a, a deep, dark, wonderful, delightful red. So, all right, everyone, good. good. Okay, I'm just, I'm kind of reading the chat. I feel, I feel like it's a, it's a little, it's a little off unless I'm just not caught up. Well, but I think, I think like the. Uh, no, I think it's very crazy because I'm having, I see people saying, I can't wait. I can't reveal it. It says the video and sound is not matching the yeah, video that visual. That was like at the beginning with, when you were talking about now. Maybe get me reset oh, because reset. let me see. How, how is the chat over there? Oh, see now <laughs> this is weird guys because I'm telling you we're, we're having issues with the iPad, but when I'm talking about the color, I'm reading the chat and they're like, reveal it already, reveal it. I'm hoping it's going to be a this and a that. I'm like, but I'm showing you what it is. But now I, now I look at the chat on the computer and it is good. Your voice and video are off. Love the yes, name. That was, like that was before. before it was the were, bandwidth yeah. thing. Okay. Let me, let me just going to clear the set. We're going to get right into the colors. Let's go. Let's go. I'll take off. I'll take off my props. See, I haven't went outside and got pine cones for it too. You are current yeah. Now. Thank you. I Thank you. you really yeah. Who, great. who doesn't love Ooh, a vintage love hatchet? It's so good. Oh, I found this, found that on Etsy. Okay. Okay. Gotta, let's get this stuff out and we'll, we're going to get right into it. Okay, good, good, good. Get this stuff. There we are. Nice sharpening board. <laughs> it is a nice board, isn't it? I do love it. Okay, so let's talk about the color itself. Uh, and really, hopefully you guys can see it. I'm, we're trying to play around with the light. I think this light seems a little on the yellow side, Mario. So let's kick it out. I don't know. I need to figure out a new camera app, if I'm being honest, because I'm not really a fan of, of what's going on. I might have to, I might have to hook up with... Uh, with Kathy Z and she could tell me about camera because her videos are always beautiful. Lighting's beautiful. I think, there we go. That's good. Yeah, my hands are going to be a little hot, but it's, it's good. Okay, let's go and talk about the color. So when it comes to reds, right, lumberjack plaid was super important to me because I wanted a red that really didn't exist in the line. And, and if you're not familiar with the palette of distress, I won't go through the entire palette, but I will show you the lineup of reds and where this fits in, okay? So when you look at that, you're like, oh my gosh, that's a, that's a lot of reds. But now if you if you look at the, I'll even pull out the, I'm gonna just push these off to the side. Okay, here are the reds. If you, if you look at them, you'll hopefully notice a, a distinct difference in the reds because reds, yes, there, this would be, I, I would say lumberjack to, to be quite honest, a true red, a real red, uh, an honest red, I don't know, everyone had de descriptive, but I, I knew what you meant when it came to 
red, uh, Paula referred to it as like a cherry red, okay? The thing about reds, they're very tricky when it comes to different mediums. If we were only doing one type of product, let's say we were only doing an ink pad, we could have probably nailed that red a long time ago. But the challenge is you need to find a colorant that's not only gonna work in a, in a dye ink pad, but also something like an oxide because now we're introducing pigment into a paint, right? As well as an embossing glaze, all of those things we needed to find different colorants because it's not the same colorant that could be used in every different medium. They all have different properties to it. So throughout the course of Distress, Fire Brick was the first red that, that was in the line of Distress. And I loved it because it was a very dirty red, kind of a charred red, I love it. And I'll show you the actual swatches. Uh, Age Mahogany came next. It's a it's a dark, dark, um, I would say I'm not, it could be considered burgundy. It just depends on what, how you use it, but it's a, it's a really intense color. It means business, but I love Age Mahogany. Then Barn Door was a warm red. Warm red meaning it had like these yellow or orange undertones. Beautiful for like a, when you saw an old barn where that red was slightly faded and when reds start to fade, they turn a little orange. So I loved Barn Door for that. Then Festive Berries was like a seasonal one. This is where we were really starting to get into this this cooler red, if you will, that, that bluer red. And we weren't quite there, but I still love it nonetheless because it has great properties to it. And you can see from the labels that it is a, a bit bluer. Some people would say it's a bit pinker, but it's a nice, uh, I would say, berry red. Then Candied Apple, we were really trying to go in between these two to hit Candied Apple. I love Candied Apple. It is a really beautiful apple red, but it didn't have the deep, dark, dark tones of Lumberjack Plaid, okay? So that's really the lineup of reds as far as how you see it. And I feel that Lumberjack Plaid is deeper, a deeper red than Festive Berries, but certainly not as dirty as Fired Brick, okay? So let's get into the actual swatches. You can see it out on paper. You can see the comparison and decide for yourself. I know that uh, when it comes to working with colors, everybody sees color different, believe it or not. Even though it could be the same color, people often see the color uh, quite different. So swatching it out, okay? I think that swatching it out, whether you have all the colors or just some of them, it's always important to have your swatches and try it out on the paper that you use. I talk about this really in every demo and people say, well, what kind of paper do you recommend? I recommend the paper that you're gonna use, right? There's no sense in making swatches. Some people go, oh, I, I made swatches on watercolor paper, distressed watercolor paper, because that's what you use, but, but I don't, I use this. Well, it's like, well, you should be doing swatches on the paper that you use because that's how you're gonna always see it in your work. So from a comparison, and again, we're hoping that the, the camera, your, your monitor, your television, whatever you're seeing it as uh, is going to do it justice, but how I just described it, I hope you can see how that color runs through, where we go from essentially the warmest red, which is Barn Door, warm, and then we go into Candied Apple, which would be more of like an apple red. I would still, I would actually consider this a true red. Candied Apple to me is just red. And I know that from working with the chemist, that's really what this color is. It is a true red. But I understand what people wanted. They wanted something a little, a little deeper. So with Festive Berries, we did go a little bit, a little bit bluer, but, but when we did this, we still had some of those warm tones. And then you can see with Lumberjack Plaid, there it is, that, that rich, deep, uh, crimson cherry red, if you will. And like I, like I said, it's not only important about how the ink is applied, but how it wicks out. Distress, because it's water reactive, is designed to wick. It's designed to, to trail and blend. And you can see all of these upper ones trail out to uh, a warmer red than Lumberjack Plaid. This is definitely that, that deep crimson cherry red. Some people refer to it as like a blood red. I think crimson's a nicer way to talk about that. But then as you go a little deeper, you go into Fired Brick, and then of course, Age Mahogany. And Age Mahogany's got beautiful undertones. And I, I often see people say, oh, you need to do this kind of wine or color or a Merlot or this. They, they get very descriptive, but truth is, Age Mahogany has those undertones if you, if you wet it out. You'll get a lot of those great values of wine color in this color instead of just applying it straight. Keep that in mind, okay? Then, we get into oxides. And I think when you see the oxide, that's when you really see the distinct difference of why Lumberjack Plaid was so necessary in the lineup, especially because so many people are using oxides for stamping, 
for blending. And when you look at the lineup here, now these have all been misted with water, so they have oxidized, because I think that's the fair thing to show is how it's oxidized. But of course, if you don't spray it with water, it's going to be even a, a more realistic color, you'll see from the, the other swatches. But going in from barn door to festive berries, we're still in that warm space. Then we have lumberjack plaid. Mm, see that really nice deep crimson then fired brick and then aged mahogany and again these have all been sprayed with water therefore they have oxidized if you don't spray this with water oxides won't oxidize and you'll get a nice uh, more vivid color of that but there again look at the wicking see this this right here this one uh, i'm gonna say this one ink this one pro this was the one that i think held everything up that even though we uh, the we the chemists uh, were able to nail lumberjack plaid in the dye sense we couldn't get it right when it came to an oxide because when it was wicking out, it was just turning into funky. That's all I could describe. It was not holding its own. And so it was important. I'm like, well, slow and steady. We'll just wait. We'll wait. And in two years, it was two years in development. It was worth the wait because I think that we have a great red that definitely needed to be in this line and has a distinct difference from any other red out there. And some people might be rolling their eyes going, no, nope, I was perfectly happy with the reds that I have. And that's great, you do you. I, I wasn't, and since <laughs> Distress is, is my palette, this is the, really the, the colorway that I wanted to go because I, I feel that reds are very important for not just seasonal makes, but they, they play such a, a role when it comes to layering and building a lot of different things, whether you're doing plaids or whether you're doing uh, hearts at Valentine's Day or whether you're doing uh, Americana, any of those, uh, those types of backgrounds, red is very pivotal in that. And as you can see, red has so many different variables and tones. Now in paint, that's another thing I couldn't be happier with is paint. And I normally don't do swatches of paint, but there again, I'm super excited about every product in this particular color release because the formulation was so distinctly challenging, but the results are perfection. So here again, barn door, candied apple. So this is what I'm saying. You get more of that true red, but it is on the warm side. Festive berries, we go a little bit blue. Then we have lumberjack plaid. So look at that paint. Oh, look at that crimson color. That right there, when you're painting things and you're gonna see from the makes, just beautiful. I, I agree, I appreciate the chat because those of you I just saw Lisa's like working with primary colors is difficult. You're absolutely right. When you, you think that a color like this would be the easy colors and colors like say Uncharted Mariner or whatever would be difficult. And that's completely opposite. Those weird blends are, are kind of fun. They're happy accidents often. But when you, wanna, when you wanna hone in on something specific and change its properties, especially in the world of distress where it needs to also have reactive ability, it, it was just unbelievable. But look at that red paint. Oh, I know Paula's sitting there just clapping like, yay, we have that. Uh, fired brick and then of course, aged mahogany, right? So far, so good. Now, I'm gonna go into the stamping part because Often when I do swatches, I'm going direct to paper. I'm literally taking my ink pad and squishing it down. So you're getting a lot of product here to see the saturation of color. But for these, this is just stamping the product. And I stamped in ink and I stamped in oxide just to show you the visual difference of stamping. And I did the exact same order that I did my swatches, barn door, candied apple, festive lumber, uh, fired and, and aged mahogany. So this one is distress ink. So you'll see just from stamping the difference in the color as you go through. And it's a little bit more subtle, if you will. And there's no right or wrong to me, but when you compare how those colors actually stamp, when you're like, for example, for a poinsettia, you would look and say, okay, I like this. This is a bit warmer. This is, this is uh, festive. This is lumberjack. That's going to be that nice cherry, more traditional, perfect red for poinsettias. This is where you, if you like a little bit of those dirtier poinsettias, those deeper colors, which I do, uh, or aged mahogany. And of course, now when you combine these colors, if you combine them on a stamp, they're going to look even more spectacular, uh, like I shared last week in the demo about mixing and matching your colors. But you can really see from a lineup here all the different values. And it's so weird that you don't necessarily uh, appreciate it by the label until you see it all swatched out next to each other. Again, oxides. Now oxides, these have not been sprayed with water. So this color is certainly gonna be uh, more, more true, if you will, than the sprayed version. Because remember, oxides only oxidize if they come in contact with water. If you don't spray them with water, they don't oxidize. So they don't get that 
that hazy look. And they stamp beautifully, especially if you're working with clear stamps, but also rubber stamps. Pretty spectacular to see an oxide, which is a dye and a pigment, maintain that vivid color integrity. Because you can see from a lot of these colors, even aged mahogany, when you compare the oxide with the ink, you can see the distinct difference, right? You can see how much lighter aged mahogany oxide is than this ink. I knew when I was working on this particular color, and that's what I was saying, that oxide was just such a beast, man. I have other words for it, but it's just that oxide held everything up. I wanted this oxide version of Lumberjack Plaid to be as consistent with the ink version as possible. Because otherwise, to me, these have very, they're subtle, subtle similarities, subtle differences, um, even with this one, but you can see this maintained its color integrity, probably even a little deeper red than the dye, which never happens. Obviously, you can see in the other colors. So unbelievable. I mean, Lumberjack Plaid is, if I didn't show you just in that why it was needed, then, well, I can't convince you that it was needed because visually you see it and you're like, I got it. Now, the color itself, I also like to take you through the colors when it comes to individual swatches, because anytime you work with a medium, whether it is an ink pad, the re-inker for that, because a lot of times people do stuff with backgrounds, whether you're doing things with re-inkers, or if you have the spray stain, which is a fluid version of this, it's not the same as a re-inker, uh, it has just some different resins in it that make it flow a little differently, or the oxide spray, or of course we have the paint and we have the embossing glaze. So all of these swatches, I, I like to show different values because you can build up a product, you can blend a product, I already showed you stamping, and that's gonna be the difference in the color. Then of course we're gonna to get to the makes because I also think that when you see how that color plays with other products and other things in the distress line, it's really, really good. I agree, it is a beautiful holiday red. Thanks for the sweet words, you guys. I, I'm, happy, I'm happy I waited, to be honest. I'm really happy because there was a time uh, it was last year, actually, at this time, where I was like, okay, I think it's just going to be good enough, but I, I hate the oxide. And the chemist I was working with, Steve, he's like, you know what, just, if you're not in a rush, let's just wait. And, you know, then, then we swapped out, I think, Villainous Potion is what we actually launched last year uh, instead. And I, I'm not, not disappointed in that at all. So here you can see the ink pad. This is on Distress Watercolor cardstock. This is smooshing an ink pad down, spraying it with water, and actually dipping and drying, dipping and drying. Because remember with inks, uh, wet on wet blends, but wet on dry layers. So here I wanted to show how wonderful this color layers. You can still get some really nice, almost candy cane red, right? Those, that nice little lighter color, but then you get that rich saturation of Lumberjack Plaid just from layering it up just by Pressing it down, drying it, pressing it down, drying it. It maintains its color integrity. And that's a test that I do because I feel that if it can't handle water and it's gonna get weird little, you know, limey highlights, sometimes dyes break down like that, then it really wasn't meant for distress. Blending, you can see it blends like a dream. This is ink, this is distress ink. Just on white cardstock, I love the blend. Now paper matters when you're working with inks in particular. So in the case of Lumberjack Plaid, you can see that this one is definitely warmer. Why? Well, this is mixed media. So mixed media uh, heavy stock is a little bit, a little cream. You can see there's the difference in paper color. So if you're working on, on a cream colored paper or tags, yeah, that red is going to definitely appear warmer because we're dealing with something translucent and it's always gonna pick up the values of that. Not that that's a bad thing, but it's important to know when you have any kind of ink that often you may wanna change its property just a little bit Try changing your paper. I think it could be really good, All right? So those are going to be uh, pressed, layered, and blended, which is nice. Then we go into oxides. Now oxides, because we've added water to these, oxides totally change how this color layers, right? We've got the dyes and we've got the oxide. Anytime we add water and this oxidizes, it's going to completely change but visually it's just remarkable because we're still getting those deep undertones, those rich crimson values of lumberjack plaid, that deep, deep red, but we're also not getting any hot pink. It is maintaining that cherry red look, even though we've added so much water with oxide. Now when we blend a little bit deeper, you, I think you know when you compare these two, you are getting a deeper red on just white, just blending, again, no water. So interesting how these 
these shifts, that's what I was saying, even stamping, it's a little bit, it's a little bit darker, which <laughs> I'm not complaining. I love it. Uh, when it comes to working on different papers, especially with oxide, it changes the value of the, the dye part of an oxide, but you can see here on the pigment part, it maintains that deep, dark look. Just blend it out on mixed media. And then we get into the sprays. And I've said this for years, and I know that there's people that are still uh, convinced that it's like, oh, I can just take a reinker in water and I've got a spray, and that's great. You do you, like I said. But there is something different about the formulation of sprays. The sprays are such a saturated colorant that you can put down so much color with just a couple of sprays. And that is what I love about spray stains. If, you, if you're into backgrounds, if you're into stencils, you really get a lot of mileage out of this product without squishing the life out of your ink pads. Because that's what I used to do, right? Smash, smash, smash. Now you've seen me stamp with stains, stencil with stains. Because when you look at the color intensity of that, whether you're doing this on watercolor or mixed media, you get a, a wonderful saturation of color. It's still reactive with water. So all of this kind of splattering and splotching, that's all I did on these swatches, literally sprayed it dried it for just a few seconds so the color started to set in the paper and then flick water on there and just let the water let it air dry so then the water can just start opening up those areas and create some cool effects but beautiful with the stain oxide sprays same thing we're able to to put down a significant amount of color you can see between these two swatches not much of a change from the top layer we're just seeing a subtle difference in that base layer that dye layer if you will because this is mixed media, a little bit warmer. This is white. And so to me, these, these undertones, this is a little bit uh, cooler red. And because we have that warm paper, a little bit warmer, but beautiful. And again, it's an easy way to get a lot of color down on a substrate with just a couple of sprays and you just do your thing. It's great. Then we get into paint and paint. Oh man, it just surprises me because <laughs> if you're not familiar, did you hear that laugh? I couldn't even help myself. If you're familiar with distress paint, it is a water reactive acrylic paint. Some people just use it as paint, take it, brush it on and be done. And you, and you can, you can totally do that. But honestly, what makes this paint so weird or cool and all the distress paints do this, it is a water reactive paint. Meaning if you put some paint on a, on a craft mat, you spray it with water, and instead of just painting it on, which you get beautiful coverage painting it on, you actually dip your paper in that wet paint and dry it just like you would ink. You get all of that reaction with a paint and it's totally smooth. It's got just that, that wonderful finish, but this is now permanent. Distress paint is the only distress product that is waterproof when it dries. So when I'm building up these layers, I can stamp on this, I can do crayon, I can do anything I want over the top of this and it is going to be permanent underneath that. So this is not going to re-wet in any way, but you can see the fluid movement. It looks like ink because it's, it's, kind of a, it's kind of a wet paint and different paints have different viscosities obviously for color. And I will say that the longer these sit around, the thicker these get because of its colorant. So use your product, um, but it is a water-based acrylic. So if you find that you want your paint to be a little thinner, you could add some water to your paints, right? As long as they stay fluid. But the, the interesting thing about this is you always have to play around with, with different mediums and see uh, what it is that you like. We found when Paula was doing her makes for this is that if you put distress collage medium on this particular paint and you like you normally would with paint and you let it air dry, something in that collage medium makes this turn into like a weird orange color. So to get around that, you make sure your paint is totally dry, heat set it. Then when you put on your collage medium, put on a thin layer and dry it with a heat tool immediately. And that will keep that collage medium from changing this, this color. But just one of those weird things that happen with this particular dye and distress paint. But the workaround of course is drying it. You can see that on mixed media, we get a lot more play here because obviously mixed media heavy stock. This is a paper that's designed to leave the color on the surface a little bit longer. So if you just compare watercolor and mixed media, they both do things but they, to me, I, can, I see the distinct difference. This is what I would expect from watercolor, kind of splotchy, which is what we get with watercolor. This is a little bit more fluid, a weird like striation of color, if you will, because that mixed media is just, oh, it's so, so good, right? Love that. And I love the fact, again, that it is permanent. So then we get into the glaze of lumberjack plaid. And like I was saying, I was so happy about having a glaze. Why? 
because especially at Christmas time, especially with all the ideology stuff, the lantern, all that metal, I just wanted that really intense uh, crimson red for the glaze. Because Distress Embossing Glaze is translucent, the color of surface you put it on is going to impact its overall color, but you can see how that glaze is a beautiful shine. You're gonna see some great uh, things from the maker. Sharon did some great cards also just to show the, the features of an embossing glaze. I'm gonna grab my swatches actually right here. This is one that I, I always update my swatches. They're kind of like little paint sticks. Uh, I just take different papers. So this is Distress Watercolor, this is Mixed Media, and this is Craft Heavy Stock. I label the back of all oh, of mine. Come on, those swatches are beautiful. They are beautiful. I love them. I just take an embossing dabber, put the glaze on so there's no other ink color because this is what's going to share uh, the color of how that glaze appears on a substrate. And if you put a color underneath it, for example, and I've done this in, in different demos, if you ink with a red, because all of this, these are both embossable. So if I were to ink with a red and put a different color red glaze, I would create a whole new, new tone or version of that. But in the, in the red glazes, I'm just gonna pull these out. There we go. So we have fired brick, okay? That would, that's fired brick and that's a perfect fired brick glaze. We had what I thought was just that bright, beautiful candied apple, right? We launched this, I think we did this this year actually, that bright, candied apple, but take a look at where Lumberjack comes in. See Lumberjack plaid? You see what I mean about that cool crimson red? Mm, mm, mm. That's good. That's, that, that's just, I, because when you see it and you see it done, you can really appreciate it because all the colors are beautiful in their own right. They are. It's just how you see it on a surface and how you know what to do with it. And when you see the, the differences, doesn't mean I'm not gonna ever use another red other than Lumberjack. It's gonna be one of those things. I do love it. Um, you would have, someone just said, is it a blue red? Well, your eyes would have to tell you if it's a blue, how you see that red. It is a cooler red, so I guess you could say it's a blue red, but I wouldn't because I think festive berries, I think that's a blue red because to me, I see more purple undertones. To me, this is more of a deep crimson red. I think it has more black in it than blue. That's my opinion but your, your eyes are going to see what they see in a color, but you can see the distinct difference in that. And yes, swatches are, <laughs> swatches are everything. But more than that, I think, are the makes. So let's get into the makes and, and just see how Lumberjack Plaid plays in with everything else. You're gonna see it from, from stamps to dyes to, oh, all of those things. <laughs> Ideology, it's just gonna be good. Um, yeah, nice, Joanne. So how long do we have to wait for this to be a watercolor pencil? I'm not sure. Uh, but I hope not, not three years. That's what I hope. I hope it's going to be sooner than later. But I, I agree. It's funny now when, when the new product comes out, you, in, especially you have a medium like, in that case, watercolor pencils. It is funny that when you see a color, like already you want to connect, oh, I want it in, in the medium that I want to work with. So. so a shout out to the new color makers. New color makers are always just a, a select group of, of makers. It started out when we did new color and, and Ranger was doing it uh, in the lab. They were making these small batches and there's four new color makers. And, and obviously with the maker team, we're at, you know, in the upper 20s, but for new color, because it started out so small, because we can only make a few and it was like, okay, we got to send it out. Uh, each of those makers had, have pretty much a specific assignment when it comes to new color. Uh, so Paula, Stacy, Sharon, and Zoe Hillman, they have been the new color makers since we started doing the new color. And, so a shout out to them for continuing to do it. The other makers, uh, they get the new color and they'll do what they want to do, but I, I kind of keep it simple in the live because Zoe, Zoe created this one. Her assignment with new color is always, how does it pair with brown? How, do you, how does that color hold up to grunge that you do? Sharon is, how does that color look with other colors in the line, right? How does it look with bright colors with, uh, because Sharon loves to work with color. Stacy is, how does that hold up with white? She does a lot of shabby or vintage, and does that color have a soft side to it? And Paula is always ideology. How does that pair with ideology uh, and keeping its vintage aesthetic? So you're gonna see from the makes that that specific, I'll just say, look and feel uh, is really what the makers <laughs> have to kind of stick with. You know, even though it's like, oh, but I wanna use it with different colors. Well, not for the assignment you do for live. You gotta stick to it, and I love how they, how they tell the story of the color. So this vignette tray that Zoe did, again, just took it literal, just plaid where she did the plaid stamping. That is our Santa. I think that was like, what was, he, was he like Woodland Santa? I think this is a Sizzix die, 
but how she turned him into a lumberjack, right? Stamped his shirt. He normally carries a tree. I love that she did the umbrella to show off, obviously, the plaid. You can see with the, the wood, the lumber 3D, that you can really create a nice woodland vibe, but now you can see how well that red pairs with brown, right? It really pops on the brown. And there's a lot of different mediums. Here's just using lumberjack on that lantern ideology. There's tiny lights. See, there's a little light back there. Uh, so tiny light, so that little lantern will turn on and off. Little wood slides, but a, a great way just to show how the color pairs with brown. Now, it really wouldn't be a, a, a make from Zoe, right? It wouldn't be an assignment from Zoe if, if we didn't get a hat. So I'm really glad she did that, even though you know she's like, okay, here's the brown thing, but I still gotta do the hat thing. This is also using a Sizzix die. This is the Curio box. And for the holidays, if you're, if you're going to create gift boxes or anything like that, you can use your stamps and inks. Use, I love that the, this is the new Christmas. That's from Department Store, that label, right? We've got this guy, the, the top hat, and that's from Distinguish, the stamp set. She always puts stuff in. But just created a nice decorative box. Because this is a die, this is a curio box die uh, that I did with Sizzix, she was able to make a little gift box. Take a look at that Tartan Starbucks card in there. Yeah, some little candies. But I also love how she used the ideology tape around that box. Because truth is, if you think about the plaid, I've kind of been showing you not only the color, but the name all month long in the Saturday Lives because I was wearing shirt. that shirt. Yep. Every week. Every week. Although I, I wear that every Christmas, so it wasn't that. But really, it was because when I was doing that, Mario's like, are you sure you want to wear that shirt? I'm like, but I always wear this shirt for Christmas Lives. This so is what it is. Starbucks, um, was that actually a Tartan card? Yes. Wow, that's yeah. awesome. Isn't that good? I, I didn't see that. I have it in my collection. Tartan. I have an album full of Starbucks cards. I, I love that. I love yes. Tartan. I am waiting for a very cool <laughs> Starbucks card that I got from the Philippines, but it's been like two months, but I'm Tartan. waiting. It's a cool Tartan. Tartan. Uh, I love it. So again, you can just see that when you pair it with different colors, it can still maintain its color integrity, but can, it can also kind of warm up a little bit. But the color here, like when you just see it used by itself, it is that really beautiful, rich, rich uh, color. Oh. Gosh, okay. Amazing. Tartan. <laughs> I think he's just gonna keep saying that with Tartan. I, I don't I'm not sure if you should pause in that, but that's okay. I think I think yes. So Stacy created this and I love this card because the background is using inks direct to surface, but again pairing it with black and white, it really holds its integrity from a color perspective. She went in and did some coloring in there. There's a little sparkle. There you go. A little bit of glitter there but then she stenciled over the top. So I think that's another thing to keep in mind when you're dealing with really deep colors. You can certainly use archival, even black soot archival, which is really nice and dark and black, and ink on an ink is going to fade in a little bit. If you ever want something to stand out over the top, you have to switch mediums. Because if you work with the same mediums, they're, they're designed to kind of blend together. If you change your mediums, they're gonna sit on top. So I thought it was very clever that she went in and used the plaid stencil and stenciled over the top of this with black soot distress paint because that paint is gonna be completely opaque. It's going to cover up that red completely so you don't have any lumberjack showing through because the black is intense. So I think that's really nice and that's why I put these kind of uh, lined up so you can see from a plaid perspective, yes, you can layer it and blend. Yes, you can stamp on it. But if you wanted to have even more contrast and you didn't want it to to kind of have a, a seamless kind of fluid look, switch your mediums. Right? Great, great example of how that color changes with everything. Then Paula created a a beautiful little make. You know, I think I don't know. I'll I'll bring some of these makes in a little later, so I won't I won't clear them off. I'll just move them off to the side and then I'll bring them in uh, later. I just want to focus on one. Paula created this vignette, and this just shows uh, the paint. Now, this is when she discovered about collage medium kind of changing it. Uh, her fix was uh, not only just drying it, but you can also put another layer of paint on top of that because the paint will go over collage medium as well. But this is a couple of ideology vignette boxes that she painted, did a little stamping, do the glaze. That's the nice thing about having a glaze. You can do tone on tone. So paint and then stamped and embossed with that same color glaze, you're getting that, that deep, deep red. And then when we open it up, take a look at that, Plaid Palooza. Now I love the design tape from Ideology. If 
that little plaid edge. I love seeing the baseboards kind of creating a vignette. Look at that deer. We do love the new salvage deer, do we not? A little bit of that lumberjack plaid on the ribbon, that little pine twine around the, the edge, that little trimming, I love it. Peace on earth. The paints used for the adornments. Of course, Paula did the tinting on the paper dolls, also a lumberjack plaid, doing the bouquet. I love the red flowers on the tree. I think that's so vintage, so vintage, so kitsch, because I love the mica flakes, I love the bouquet flowers, and I love that little bit of, I don't know, it's like a little poly, little cotton in there, but beautiful. Oh, look, there's even little juniper pieces. I just noticed that. Look at these little juniper die cuts in there with the flowers. That's beautiful. That's beautiful, P. A great way to, to decorate that tree instead of just doing the traditional ornaments, but using the backdrop papers in there, some layers. There you can see the flashcard. Nice, nice display, nice decoration. But this is what I was saying about from a holiday perspective or something festive, this red is everything, you guys. And it does pair well with ideology because you can see here like in this, this is a much warmer red. See, we're gonna get a whole little lesson in red. We got a warm red and now we've got a cool red. But but when we talk about the tones, but do we have a nice red? this one is nice, true, real, and good. rich, good. I don't know all the other descriptive words, but I knew what you guys meant, really. I, I'm not making fun. I knew exactly what you meant. It's like, we need to get a good red. I'm like, it doesn't mean the other reds are bad, but I knew what you meant. We needed that rich, rich, deep, cherry red, uh, crimson red. So a beautiful, beautiful make, right? That, again, that's ideology backdrops. That's one of the layers. So you can see that even though this is a warm red, cool, it all plays nice. It just does, it does. So Sharon created a card and I, I love, you're gonna see a lot of cards from uh, Sharon and Zoe just because they, they change different mediums and that to me changes everything. I agree, Paula, it is. It is a good red, rich red, I love that. So this card Sharon did just on a craft background but what's really nice about this to get that red to pop she used paint so another thing to keep in mind when you're looking for a a more saturated color especially on craft paper because craft is a very porous substrate you can do a lot of mediums on craft but it's very very porous and it will always uh, suck up an ink especially if you're doing an ink pad or an oxide it will always absorb this medium so to maintain this color integrity we'll go back to this paint. So Sharon just took a sheet of that craft stock, that heavy, painted it. It could be chipboard, it could be any substrate that you want to work on, because this is it's just a nice uh, way to add that that base color. Painted it and then went in and die cut her pieces. So all of her die cut red pieces, this is all painted paper. There you go. You can kind of see in there those little paint marks. So think about that as a maker, that if you're looking for that perfect color or that perfect color in a substrate you want to work with, just paint. And you can paint, you can paint with a brush, you can paint with your blending tool. That's really simple. Just take a, a blending tool and create a light layer. You don't have to saturate it with paint because the paint uh, is completely opaque when you put it on. It would only be translucent if you added water to it. But I love how she paired that with just black and white accents. Use, that's an old school uh, Sizzix dye. I love all those little small circles. Cute, right? Very festive, but still has a little touch of vintage. A touch of vintage for Sharon, right? That's probably the most brown I've seen on a Sharon make, and I couldn't love it more. Yeah, really, really good. So that's the thing to remember about different mediums, right? Distress paint on that one. Then we've got some cards, and it, it's, it's great. Look at this. Zoe made three cards, and, and they're all different in their own right, but they all have a wonderful vintage vibe. This is super important to recognize a color and what you can do with it because all of these are lumberjack plaid, but it doesn't mean you have to just put it on and, and be done. You can add other elements to it. So on a card like this, you can add other colors. You can, you can do crayon, you can do uh, alcohol inks. You can do anything that you want to, to put on a color to change it. You can do a little mica stain so you can see that wonderful shimmer of mica on the stars and the candles. Love the greenery. That's one of my modern festive. That's one of my favorite dyes this year. It's interesting. It, I think it's one of those things that are, are gonna kind of go unnoticed at first. And then when it gets uh, discontinued, people are gonna be like, oh, where did, where's that one with the big pine and the big pine cones? I'm like, that was modern festive. I like it because, because of this. It has a really substantial scale to it that none of the other uh, greenery that I've done in the past holiday seasons have. 
and I like that modern vibe, but sometimes when you see it all in the package with the fruit slice and the poinsettia, you're like, I don't really know. But to me, this has a perfect vintage aesthetic paired with the little drippy candles back there and the lantern. Zoe, I, I just, I love the card, a little merry and bright, some stamping back there, and then we've got those other stars. But beautiful because that's lumberjack plaid and then distressed a little bit deeper. Then you take this, this is the new colorized bow tie. We've got that wood slice 3D folder, beautiful folder. It just looks like a card made out of wood. This folder is, it, those of you that have it in real life, you, I know, I've, I've seen it on social media. Like, I cannot believe this folder makes a piece of paper literally look like a wood slice. It's so good. But you can see how great that red pairs up with different things, adding some black to it, adding some inking. You can create that depth and tonality you want to get uh, with lumberjack plaid because when you're layering it up it's going to always maintain its color integrity it's never going to shift into something that won't go with itself so i think it's a great card beautiful right this i think this would also be good like just sewn or maybe be like a book or pull some tags out of it because i just think that cover is so it's, it's just the bow i think it's the bow and the slice but i love that and then we go very traditional seeing that color this is the retro santa die and you can see just the traditional look of that red and how it is a great Santa red, a great Christmas red, or stamping with it, stamping with it, doing background paper, also doing die cuts. It really does hold up well to brown, doesn't it? Because often when you put a red with brown, it does want to get on the warmer side because brown is a very warm color. So when I keep talking about having a red hold up to that, it's because often as soon as you put red with brown, it just wants to go uh, on that warm route and to me it really maintains that that impactful crimson look to it those beautiful cards so great to see uh three different cards three different ways of of vintage you know full-on brown just adding some other elements doing some backgrounds the focal point or pairing that color with other colors right yellows and greens and browns just beautiful great card zoe i love that look at all those cards zoe wow then we can see, and I'm gonna, I'll keep this one because I'll show you the card that Sharon did just to, just to prove my point about, you know, the color holds up to many different styles. If you're vintage, it's gonna be your red. If you're into uh, brighter colors, metallics, vivid colors, it's also going to hold up. And, and what I like about this, this of course was done, just the background you can do with inks, this glaze. So Sharon created this and used embossing glaze as that surface because you can embossing, uh, you can emboss the paper ahead of time and die cut it, or you can die cut your pieces and then use an embossing dabber, or you could use your ink pad and then do the glaze. I often like to glaze the paper and die cut it, but that's just me because then I get a, a cleaner rounded cut. But I love the look of this. I like that the embossing glaze gives a little shine to it where the other papers are just keeping that matte finish. We've got some metallic there, little cityscape in the background little night sky with the splatter that bold i love that bold text just the bold hiding is really really nice and i think this this might be i think this is al alcohol alloy maybe i think this looks like alloy to me because it doesn't have the thickness of foundry wax but it might be i don't know sharon's here so she'll say if it's foundry wax or alloy but i love the metallic because it does look almost a leafing kind of foil, but still vintage, a great vintage aesthetic, but completely different where it has to uh, create a different aesthetic. And I think Retro Santa, he's a good one this year, right? Because he can take on a, a perfect vintage, even though he's retro and this. And I also love seeing how so many people are, are really changing uh, the look of that. Just by adding some, some color, you can completely customize how that looks by doing some some inking to those layers underneath, or you can just uh, keep it at that, that retro vibe. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I love it. All right, so Sharon created these cards as well. She was kind of in full glaze mode, and this is what I was saying about how a color can really stand up next to other colors in the distress line, colors that maybe you wouldn't think uh, to put it with, but Sharon does. So these are all done with embossing glaze. This is the brush stroke stamp, one of my favorite stamp sets. Uh, it has so many different types of brush strokes. So this is just stamping and embossing, but it really gives you that, that paintbrush look to be able to stamp with your embossing ink and emboss. But seeing it, you know, next to, to pick raspberry and twisted citron, that red is still a beautiful modern Christmas red, right? And I love the simplicity of the cards as well. Having 
that stamp in repetition and just embossing with your glaze and keeping everything else white, very, very classy because it's just, it has a, a simplicity to it, but just a pop of color. And obviously you can, you can change it, right? You can customize it however you want. I, I love this one. This looks like Uncharted Mariner. This one, <laughs> maybe this is ice spruce, I think in the glaze, I could get my swatches and double check, but nonetheless, I love how it has those, those two different blues and the red. But to me, when I look at these two cards, the red doesn't change in my eye. I still see it as the same red, whether it's paired with cool colors or uh, brighter colors, it maintains that color integrity. I hope I'm making sense with, with what I'm saying, because uh, I think it's that dirty gray. I think someone said it's speckled egg. I think that one's, that's deeper than speckled egg, but you could do speckled egg, that'd be beautiful. And then we've got just some totally fun colors, right? Little wild honey. I think this is probably wilted violet glaze. See, look, not only the color, but the shine. It just, wow, just that's what it is, where sometimes you think, man, just taking a stamp, you're always stamping it in clear ink and your color really comes from an embossing glaze. That's what I love about the power of embossing, but the glaze, because it's translucent, that's why to me, it has a little bit more, I don't know, a little depth to it. You get some highs and lows because depending on how much powder is there, unlike a, an opaque embossing powder that's completely solid, this, depending on how much powder is melted, will change the tone of the embossing glaze because all of the distress embossing glazes are translucent. Okay, beautiful cards, right? We so good. A couple hundred of those for our hey, cards. 200, that's it. Awesome. There we go. Yeah, the colors are just, and, and it's the shine. Again, everything on the, on the back. And I always find Holy it- Holy jolly, it's foundry wax. Ah, see, there we go. Well done. Very thin, it's beautiful. So Sharon created this. I, it's, it's always surprising to me. And this is what I was saying about the, the makers being challenged with the new color. It's also about creating different ideas. And you've seen that so far in the makes of how they're utilizing different products, but staying true to kind of the shabby, you know, Stacy sticking with uh, that shabby chic plaid on white, Zoe with brown, Sharon mixing colors, Paula with ideology. So seeing this blend, it's a, it's a wonderful sky. Right? You, you don't have to always do this winter scene of, of blues and whites. I love how that color, that lumberjack, really transitions from the purple tones into the reds, into the, that warmer sky, and then just using the Christmas cutouts in black. So cool. Because these cards, this is about the color being the star. Right? The shapes are, are certainly adding that, that wonderful graphic aesthetic to your card. And I think seeing the shapes done out of either black cardstock or white just really draws your eye into the colors you use. So I love how that blends out into the sky. Wouldn't have thought of that. That's, that's why the makers do what they do. Because they're like, well, let me show you. I'm going to keep going with Sharon. Because Sharon was just like making like, but Sharon does that. And chances are she probably made everything in one night. Because that's also like a superpower where she can just make a, a million things in one, right? A million things. I'm like, can you, do you have time to make a couple things? She's like, yeah, no problem. And then it's like a stack of stuff. But I like the fact that, uh, and I, I totally appreciate that most makers were channeling the holiday season as they should, because we talked about it being uh, the perfect festive color. But let's not forget as we go into Valentine's Day uh, or even into spring, how beautiful this red is going to, to look on cards. You can see it watercolored with the floral outline stamp little ideology sticker. You can do anything, but not everything. It's so good to, to utilize whatever you're channeling. So sometimes people kind of get a little seasonal burnout when it comes to making. Doesn't mean you shouldn't be making because everyone else is maybe making for Christmas, whatever. Just get started on making some everyday things. Uh, I love, this is one of my favorite dies, the faceted heart, but I love how that pops on this mixed media piece. Again, using it for colors. And I know there's a lot of mixed media artists that are always looking for a red that's going to not fade into the background. So you can see how it really holds its own paired next to the, the textures, the, the stamping, the stenciling, the layers here, and then having that die cut piece. And I, I really love that sprinkling of glaze as well. I think Sharon was, see, I think Sharon was loving the glaze as, as much as I did. Really having one that melts to this beautiful red and just having it sprinkle where it's not actually covered, just adds not only a texture, but a little bit of shine. But seeing lumberjack plaid paired in with every day, hopefully that's also gonna give you a visual. It is going to be beautiful for, 
Valentine's Day, but also a red in mixed media. You guys know, but those that do mixed media, you know exactly what I'm talking about. That red is just one of those because it's a primary. It just likes to, it likes to transform into whatever it's next to. And sometimes it, it loses, loses what it should be and not this color. So pretty amazing stuff. I'm going to actually sort these over here. So at the end, I'm going to just pile them up because we can. There we go. I'm sorting them in my own way, Mario, over here. So there we go. Okay. Thank <laughs> okay. All right. So this one, Paula created this again, ideology. And I love seeing all of those elements, you know, from ideology, how, how beautiful the, the release was for Christmas this year in particular with the layers. I love that that botanical layers, a lot of ideology. I'll just tell you that it's not coming back the same next year. Everything is pretty much changing for next year, but I do love this pack of layers botanical because there was a lot of great options and how Paula built this beautiful cluster. There are those candy canes, that red, she did the ribbon in lumberjack plaid. Then we've got some baseboard pieces, the label sticker, that stamp tag that's done in lumberjack. And then we have the backdrop. And then of course the frame painted with lumberjack. So this was, super important to have that color really play nice with the different tones within ideology. And I always love how Paula can put things together, right? Just take a frame and whether you have a frame panel, these are, these were ideology frame panels, but just this idea alone of, of finding a picture frame, maybe it's going to be at the craft store, the dollar store, whatever it is and transform it with all the things you have. Take your backdrop, stick that down. Maybe you have some stamp tags or backgrounds, place that down. Uh, add any of your little elements, make your collage. And it doesn't always have to be in the middle, right? If you have a great background that you want to show, you know, put it off into one corner, build up layers with different types of adhesive. So you can see a lot of foam adhesive was used here just to create some depth. There's also a little dusting of rock candy on there. See that little bit of glitter? There's some rock candy in there. So I like that by adding those foam layers, you can also tuck in dimensional elements like the candy canes or the tiny bells. Then you can add these little sparkly stars, these little glittery stars. These are from the baseboard pack. So also com combining thick things like chipboard, shiny things like layers, and then matte things like backdrops. It just gives that piece so much depth and, and beauty. This is a great make. It's a great way that you can go in and take some elements, especially from a pack of that. And you can create many things out of a single pack of layers. You, got many candy canes in a pack that you can do. You can split up your baseboards. That's the, but I know that Paula just, she lives in a world of ideology. I can't blame her, All right? Beautiful, great make. Then, okay, I'll set that there. Then I saw these and I was just like, ah, it just made me smile because honestly, I didn't think of it. Um, and that's what always makes me smile. What I, I never see something for what it, what it could be until I see a maker do it. And Stacy created these. And you can see this is the, the silhouette bird die that we did this year with Sizzix. I think it was in chapter two. Great for spring. I talked about that. We even talked about uh, making it ravens for Halloween. But to see that shape of a bird to be used like for cardinals, I loved it. I absolutely loved it because we know that the silhouette birds, they're more of that paper cut anyway. So it's not like we're gonna be, you know, uh, the Audubon Society here going, well, that's not really what a cardinal looks like. Uh, it's just taking, it's taking all those different shapes and, and saying, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play around with, with the colors that I do. I think the idea of these little hanging cards, absolutely adorable. They're all little hanging cards. And I think that this, this does many things. One, I always think a bottle of wine. I don't know why, but this would be great hanging around the bottle of wine. Don't get me wrong. And see, she's got a little hole in there. What a, just a freaking clever idea for a card, but then it could also be an ornament. So you give that to someone, they can, they can hang that up after it's done because you've included this little hanger. Isn't that great? So the layers, a lot of different layers, stamping in the background, lumberjack plaid, uh, stamping any of those little sentiment strips, lumberjack plaid, the backgrounds, many cool things that she did, different layers of, of inks for lumberjack. She also did a little bit of black soot around there. And you see this little shine, you see these kind of drips on here. That is the embossing glaze because you can also emboss uh, with water. So if you were doing a background, you can also flick some water. I'm not sure if Stacy did water or if she did ink, but you can flick water on there. You can put the embossing glaze and emboss with water. But all of these little shiny splatters that is the embossing glaze 
for Lumberjack Plaid. Now, hopefully this idea alone will remind you to use your embossing glaze more because you can see that, man, the makers have really used, used it a lot. I love how it's paired with all these different dyes. Again, I do believe that these, these pine pieces, these elements, this is also from Modern Festive. Correct me if I'm wrong, Stacy, but I, I think some of these pieces are. Again, it's just that bolder, bigger greenery that I think is, is overlooked by a lot of people because they look at it. Uh, I talked about this before. Sometimes they, you look at something and it's like, if you don't love the whole thing or there's something about it, you're like, oh, I'm not a fan of it. It's kind of like a, an album, right? You may love all the songs. You may like two or three of it, but it, a lot of times we used, to, we used to buy the CD. Now we just download what we want. But my point here in the creative industry is if you see something, you have to often look at the shapes. Ah, thanks, Stacey. It is modern festive. You have to look at the shapes and see how those are done the same way Zoe used them because scale, it's a much bigger, chunkier greenery and it pairs well. It holds up against uh, other things because often if you have a very delicate greenery like what Paula used on the tree, right? Those are festive greens. Those are also Sizzix dye. It's just different. But I love that. I love to see how this dye is because I liked it. I knew that Modern Festive was weird, but man, these silhouette birds for Christmas, come on. And I know Heidi at Simon is like, because we, we talk about cardinals all the time. I love this look for this dye, right? But this card idea, come on. Come on. Come on. Just that is brilliant. Brilliant. Just that whole little tied through. Hmm. Okay. Everyone wants to know how i'm sure that stacy will do tutorials because uh she always many of the makers do tutorials after uh, lives especially through the holiday season so as i've said before follow the makers you can go to the maker page on timholtz.com and follow the makers but yeah stacy uh, does a lot of great tutorials they all do and they that's that's where they share all that little trickery right the stuff so definitely check it out but that's how you miss it, because if you don't follow them, then you're like, oh, I didn't see the tutorial. It's like, well, you, you missed it. So take a look at this. Uh, really wonderful. Thanks, Stacey. This is a make that Zoe created. I love the Tivoli Guards there. Tivoli is such a wonderful park. Just pretty much right right by Zoe, right? She can pretty, she takes a, like a few minutes, and she's, she's at there. Tivoli. Tivoli is the park that also inspired uh, Walt Disney to do many things for Disneyland, by the way. But I love this et cetera tag where she used Harvey and created these perfect little Tivoli guards on there. Added that, I, I love the little marquee. This is, this is one of, this was a classic Zoe. This was one of my favorite alphanumerics, this marquee, because if you, if you look, there's actually holes punched in all these letters. So what was nice is that it, this allowed you to layer this over another alphabet that I did for Sizzix, that if you cut it out of metallic, see how it looks like a marquee. So you didn't have to go in and do all the dots because the dots were recessed, but you could also do glitter. You could have done this with uh, little lights behind it. I loved it. But seeing the holly, there's some mica stain on there. This is a little et cetera trim to create that, that ledge. But take a look at all that coloring of lumberjack plaid on Harvey, just using, I love the oxide too, it just creates a cool effect. And all the inked papers, I always say, nothing beats inked papers when you're doing colorize. I know that all the packaging, when I do colorize, I just stick to uh, regular solid cardstock, but this is this is where it's all about. You take your colorize, you cut it all out of white cardstock if you want, then you can ink the pieces, or if you know the colors you want, ink up your papers ahead of time and then cut them out and build the layers because then you don't need to worry about red one, two, and three because if you have a, a modeled background, it's still gonna give you the depth that you need to achieve colorize. So that's a great, great little tip. Isn't that fun? So good. Look at the little bow up there. So cute. Yeah, that makes me smile. It does. It makes me want to see a Christmas parade at Disneyland. I just, I don't know what it is. I love that. So beautiful, beautiful make. Then another et cetera tag. See, again, a totally different vibe. Stacy created this shabby chic, little charming homespun little cottage. I absolutely love this make. Little tiny, tiny lights in, in the paper village. That little house, just how it creates that beautiful glow, right? That wonderful, that wonderful winter glow. So here we have an et cetera tag, but if you look at all the red, all the red that's everywhere, um, with the exception of that little string right there, Stacy did with Lumberjack Plaid. So everything from 
inking the ribbon, which we've talked about in a demo, how you can get seam binding ribbon and now you create your own custom ribbon. But look at all those tones of red, that rich red. You see the music stamped in the background. Also lumberjack plaid. The house, see, again, more embossing glaze. Embossing glaze and a little bit of glitter on there as well. It just gives such a, a great sheen, nice shine. There is that little vintage label die, the little red in there, more stamping down here, more ribbon. And I just, I like kind of the, I don't know, I don't know how to describe this, the homespunness. Is that really such a thing? But you know, it's got like little bits of, of lace and a little warm and natural, a little fuzziness and some, some ribbons, just how it's all kind of frayed around the edges. And this stuff, I already asked her, I'm like, what is this stuff? She recycled it off of a off of another wreath that she bought. I don't know what it is, but it's like, it's yummy stuff that creates this little wreath that goes around. Little glittered stars, little stitched on buttons. There's some ideology tape. That's what Zoe used on, on the box. I like how Stacy created that element, little ephemera, but see what I mean? Like the homespunness, there's some mummy cloth in there. I mean, and then of course the background tag, you can see back here, that is stamped with festive collage from Stampers Anonymous, that new Holly tag but not charming, little et cetera, ledge. I do love the little houses and little, whoop, little woodland trees. I'm trying to turn it on and off. There we go, perfect. Two hands holds, perfect. So let me bring this in because I, I always like to show. Okay, same substrate, et cetera tag, same color, lumberjack plaid, ideas, endless. So it's whatever it is that you like to do. Sometimes what's important to remember is if you're a card maker and that's what you do and that's your jam, then that's what you should do. But sometimes even as any kind of maker, you kind of feel like, what am I gonna do with stuff? And this is a, a very good example of, you could take a lot of elements that you could do on a card or things that maybe you could put in a vignette box, but having something that's a little bit more substantial like an et cetera tag, because these are, these are through Stampers Anonymous, it is like a paperboard, they come in different sizes. It often makes a great foundation that could hang on the wall, sit on an easel, lean up against something on a mantle. And it still takes kind of that card making uh, idea, but just puts it on a different surface. And now it's not a card. Now it's home decor. Or in this case, things that you would normally put in like a little vignette or a shadow box, but you don't like to work in the box. You take those elements and kind of stick it onto a substrate. And there, there again, it could hang on the wall, go on a mantle and you can dress it up however you want. But I, I always love to see that the same substrate could just be changed completely depending on what you what you put it on. Beautiful, just beautiful makes, so cool. isn't it? So, so good. Um, what size, et cetera, tags are these? This one in particular, I'm, I'd have to look at the package to know, or, or one of the makers could tell you, because I will say that I've named them kind of weird. I don't know if this is a, this might be a small and not a mini. I think this is small, could be wrong. Um, but yeah, et cetera, tags come in number eights, minis, smalls, medium. Massive ones, large too. All right, um, that's, a, that's a mini one. Mini. All right, well, there you go. See, told you I didn't know. All right, we got uh, a couple more makes. So next up, I'll show these cards that Sharon did. Look at the color. Just, this was about taking that color and pairing it up with something minty. When I saw these, I was like, oh, okay, there we go. Uh, that red that goes with mint, mm-hmm, lumberjack plaid, all these colors, this is this looks like a little mica stain, right? This could be shiny bobble, this could be merriment. Maybe that's a little fusion of those colors. I'm not sure, I just like to guess, it's fun. Um, this is the Yuletide dye. Uh, it's a colorized dye. For those that have done it, it's, it's not for the faint of heart, but man, when you do it, it's so worth it, isn't it? I love that, that wreath on there. There's the bell and just the stamping of lumberjack plaid in the background. It does create that perfect red, even against mint. And look at this color block card idea. Just inking these little panels, ink blending. Those are the colors. Thanks, Sharon. Uh, ink blending on your background. So instead of paint, you can see that it took on more of that fibrous feel because you're doing ink blending on cardstock. But I thought the idea was so clever to, to take those panels and then take that, that bold text and just pop out those letters and put each letter in a block. Isn't that clever? Very clever use for the Sizzix die because a lot of times you can essentially spell whatever you want if you have all of those different bold texts that we've done because we've done them all year. We did one, we did two, we did Halloween, we did Christmas. But if you save the letters, the knockouts, 
you pretty much have so many different alphabets in different sizes. See how the, the R is a different size? Because in that die set, those words are all different sizes, but look at how brilliant that can pair together. Very clever idea, Sharon, because this could be happy birthday, this could be anything if you, if you were saving your letters. And if not, I, I have a feeling that a lot of you are just gonna start cutting out those in just for the letters now. Or you're like, I'm just gonna make a whole box of alphabets. But get like a little, little bead divider and, and sort all your letters. But two great cards again, Lumberjack Plaid and how it holds up really well with a minty color because I, I think that's, that's so beautiful. Then this one, and I'm, I'm so happy that, that Zoe created it. So thanks, Zoe. I've talked about this pretty much in every live, and Zoe's like, okay, I took the hint. I got it loud and clear. But the idea, because this was an idea that uh, Zoe did some card and envelopes a couple years ago for Christmas. Maybe it was a year ago. I'm not good with time. Uh, and then when we did chapter three, she did like a little sorter. And I love the idea for the holidays of taking a vignette box, which is what this is. This is an ideology vignette box. Create your own dividers. So the dividers in here are just using uh, the Stampers Anonymous, et cetera, trim. So it's the same material as those tags, but they're little trims. So it's, you could probably do the, the divided one, but the divides go this way. So to create this, Zoe glued these in, but I like how she took the Vignette did all of her stamping. That was that stamp that Stacy showed us, right? That we had to go back into our stash and look at that perfect little stripe and create this little, this little organizer. And to me, this could be many things. And I'll, I'll kind of, I honestly, I'm sure Zoe's gonna blog about it and I'd probably tell you her version of it, but this is when I saw it, kind of what I interpreted from the ideas. This could be for you. This could be one of those things that you sit down over a weekend and you make these things and then you use it over the holiday season or it could be a gift that you would gift to someone. I like the fact that it has this little dome just for fun, just to, to kind of set the, the stage that these are all for gifts. These are all little gift tag ideas that Zoe created. So here, this is using that switchlet. So the switchlet is that kind of uh, embossing folder that also die cuts the different labels. You can change the frame, but there's a little Darling Christmas that she stamped and created these little circular tags. These tags could just be a little peel and stick that can go right on a package. If you tie something with a ribbon, it's great to go right in the center of a ribbon to make little seals. You can do a hole punch, but you don't have to decide that until you're ready to use it. But having these stamped and colored, it's a great way that you can, you can make just some circular tags and seals. I do love uh, this impressive for that reason because it makes a nice size and the fact that you get to change up the outline, because it even does that little embossing, but you get to change the die cut line, it's brilliant. Then there's a little ideology tiny clip that clips these together. So let's say you like a specific stamp set, which I know she loves this stamp from department store, she's used it. Just take a sheet and stamp away. Go and stamp, stamp, stamp. Take a little clip, clip them together, and then as you need it, you have it, it's already stamped, it's already inked, and now you can fill it out or do whatever you want, but these are already made in advance. And this is what I was saying. The idea could be for you, where you're not sitting down going, oh, I gotta make another tag for this gift. You've already, I can't even see, my gosh. Get closer to your face, Tim. Um, you, can, you can use these yourself or give them away. And they just, I like how all these little things just kind of fit and tuck in things. Here's another stamp. Again, she did the same idea where you're just stamping a tag, clipping it together and you can change your ink colors, but of course for celebrating Lumberjack Plaid, that's the color, but great for gift tags. Great that you can take that and stick that down and already have labels done. And if you do this in one little weekend sitting, or maybe this takes you a week because you only have 30 minutes a night to, to make, take those 30 minutes and just do a little bit, little compartmental making. It's like, okay, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do my die cuts or I'm gonna do my stamping, I'll cut them out tomorrow. Um, I'll do the inked edges after that. Look at these little guys. I love these little tags, these little tag dies from chapter three. And look at those little darling Christmas stamps. I would like to say that I sized them to fit these tags. I did not, but it's brilliant that Zoe figured out that, that they did fit. But take a look at that. Just stamping that from darling Christmas onto those tiny little tags because sometimes you just need a tiny little tag. And in chapter three, there were several of those different tag dies that you could attached to ornaments, small little gifts, just beautiful. Again, sitting down, stamp, 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 die cut, and off you go. Same idea, special delivery, just that's a stamp. 
so you can stamp them out and clip it. Tiny clips for the win, obviously, because that keeps things organized. You could use little paper clips. Maybe you can put them in bottles. But I also like this. I thought these were so cute that she took the Ideology candy canes, a little, a little grunge, right? Could be a little alcohol ink just to stain these and just bundled them together because maybe you want to pair one of your tags with a little candy cane and tie it on with ribbon. And so having them already, if you're going to do your inking or tinting, having that already done should go in your little box of happy. Oh, what's this? This little string? Oh, see, just some extra string. Like that idea too, because like I just said, it's probably why she did it. Having a little string where you can tie those elements on, just good. See, like each little compartment is like you just, I've not been able to dive in, can you tell? I just saw the setup and I'm like, this is it. It's brilliant. It's timing everything for the it, win. It's just so cute. So here are the little, I love this. This is a stamp set, the bold tidings, but look how she did that double stamping of the plaid with Lumberjack. Remember we demoed this? That's when Stacy was getting us all hooked on this plaid. I love seeing that plaid stamped. Uh, that plaid technique never looked better with this color, right? So doing that double stamping of all these mini tidings, but these, this die set, the vintage labels, perfect because it's going to cut and it's going to deboss that color. So you can, you could switch these up if you didn't want to do brown. Now you understand why Zoe did brown. That's the whole assignment, but these could be green. These could be debossed in Lumberjack. Well, probably not because it doesn't exist in an archival yet. And I really would recommend archival for the outside. So I'd probably stick to a green, maybe peeled paint. Uh, because if you, try to, if you try to ink these dyes with something other than archival, to me, it's just a bit messy. Um, that's just my opinion. But I love the splattering. And again, you're sitting here just, maybe you're doing die cutting one night for 30 minutes. Maybe you're doing your stamping one night. This is achievable. And then you have it. You have this whole little set that when you need something handmade, for whatever it is, you just reach into your stash and, and off you go. So here, these are a couple little cards and some, some envelopes. Uh, Zoe, can I share your, your trick for envelopes? Because I asked her about these. But if she says no, then, then I'll wait. I'll let her do it. But uh, there was something I caught about this, and I, I, asked, I actually messaged her uh, yesterday when we were setting up the, the box. But I'll wait to see if I get the green light. Anyway, this is Darling Christmas. I love these little cards yeah. just done. I can. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, thanks, Zoe. Uh, it was brilliant. So these cards, this is craft heavy stock. So you can see that this really thick, right? Perfect as a card base, perfect for uh, any type of foundational piece. If you're die cutting, if you're using it as a card base. But these, these little envelopes, this is from chapter three, Postal. So here you can see that postal thing being used on there. But these little envelopes, look at these little plaid envelopes, guys. Look at how brilliant that is, right? Where it, this is inked and stamped on just this panel because this is a die cut, so you would know the area that you want. But take a look, can you hear that? Can you see that this is like a much flimsier craft than this? Because I'll be honest, if you try to make a little envelope out of this thick paper, it is not fun. It just isn't. Um, but I loved how really, I don't know, kind of recycled and fibrous this this craft was and it had a really good weight to it. And I said, hey, can you tell me what paper you use to make your envelopes? Because it's the perfect paper for envelopes that's different. And she's like, yeah, I use an envelope. I'm like, what? So she bought a pack of craft envelopes, big ones, and die cut. So the, the panel of the envelope was big enough to fit the die and die cut the mini envelope out of an envelope. So she used that paper, which makes perfect sense because it's got the perfect coating. Because if you can see, the outside has a bit of a coating, but the inside is not. I'm like, that's very, very clever to, to just, I've never really, now I'm going to look at substrates totally different. Because sometimes you can buy a whole pack of envelopes really inexpensive. And you may not need an envelope that big, but think of it as essentially paper, especially if you like the finish or the weight of that. So an envelope to make an envelope, right? That's what I said. I'm like, duh, that is brilliant. So, and I told her that. I'm like, I've, I never would have thought of that. And now I will think of that. So I love the idea of looking at substrates a little different for what you want. Because even though you have craft paper, if you've tried to make an envelope out of something this thick, it's just, it's very chunky because it's not meant for that. But now you've got little cards and little envelopes and the envelopes could be used for many different things. Then in the back, I love that she also took that, that file folder from Specimen. And 
yes, these could be card bases. You saw uh, when we did stampers, we talked about making cards out of this. It does make great cards, but it's also just a great little pocket. So maybe you made some uh, additional cards or additional note pieces or just some blank things that maybe you want to finish later. Maybe you want to glue that on or glue a label. At just taking those kind of partially finished things, or maybe you went out and loaded up on gift cards, right? Maybe you went shopping and you're like, I'm going to buy, you know, a bunch of of $10 gift cards. And now you have them all making this little pocket. So she took the folder, stitched it up, and this could hold the gift card. So think of it like a little gift card station. You're like, okay, gift card, tag, done. But that's really the whole idea of that, that sometimes as makers, we love to make, but we're only making with a goal, with a purpose. Like I gotta make a card or I'm going to make uh, a display piece. And Sometimes that doesn't always work. Maybe our creative juju is not fired up. Maybe we don't have the time. But this, I thought, was such a great idea for the season because this could be done in little snippets of time, little compartmental making, and you can create a lot of different ideas that you can customize the gifts that you give, whatever they, they happen to be. So great. And I love the little finish with the ideology. So clever, right? That's some serious MacGyver. So there. <laughs> it is. So, so clever. So for our final make, Paula created this. I love this vignette. So this, again, clever idea. This is the divider box from Ideology. This is one of those boxes that has all those wooden dividers that normally you see a lot of makers do a vignette, but it's also a wonderful panel. It's got a great depth to it and a great size. And so Paula created this panel, perfect for the holidays. Again, sometimes you see a vignette and you see the vignette specifically for uh, whatever it is that you're going to create. You take that idea and you're like, okay, I, I can only do this as a divided box. No, nope, it's a perfect panel. So Paula created that background, doing that little stamping, right? Little exquisite stamp set, all of those beautiful florals, some little dots, some little handwriting. And this, it's just ideology trinket overload. I think that, that having all of these little elements these little chipboard pieces and layers and stars and tinsel and building them in different scale to create that tree. I mean, how perfect is that little panel? I think having all of these little details and that little sparkle of, of the tinsel, what a clever idea to take. And this could even be scraps, right? This could be paper scraps. This could be all of those things that you have. I agree. I saw that too, Zoe. I'm like, I think I, I have got to make one of these because essentially, it could be any size tree, depending on whatever panel. So if, let's say you wanted a tall skinny tree. Maybe you do a vignette tray that, that's a little bit more vertical, or maybe you wanted something a little squatty. You could take the, the smaller, maybe vignette boxes, the, the squares, and you do three different trees. I thought, I thought the idea behind uh, not only mixing and matching the elements. So here you've got, this is an et cetera trim, right? You can see how thick it is. This is stamped. There's that candy stripe. See what you started, Stacy? Uh, done with the embossing glaze. That's what gives it a little shine. Then you've got the ephemera, the elements, all right? I think seeing all of these different pieces being used. So it doesn't always have to be the same material. That to me is the magic of, of how Paula works with all the different substrates in ideology, that it could be paper, it could be layers, it could be backdrops, it could be uh, baseboards, it could be etc. But then all of just the little details. There's a little lace there, a little button. I love the little button. A uh, little, I love that. See the tinsel? It is good, right? Even if you trim it down, because this is a little trimmed down, you can. You give a little haircut. I like that little adornment, that snowflake, the layers with a little bit of glitter. So all of those different pieces, I know many, many of the makers are like, I can totally do this. I see this and it's like, I have scraps of so many things left over that I had to trim off from something. This is, this is what it's all about. It's about taking all sorts of, of different elements. And to me, I think that that is one of the cool things about all the makes, right? That the makes just have such a cool aesthetic. There's so many different ideas of what makers can do. They take so many different ideas and create beautiful things with color. I mean, you could just go on and on and on and on and see all of the amazing, cool ideas that that's done with Lumberjack Plaid, right? When you see it, you wonder, how is that even possible? How is that whole thing uh, really coming together with all of, all of these makes in a single color? How cool is that, right, Mario? Very amazing. Cool. So, oh my God. <laughs> Oh, I, 
I was, oh my god. And my lips, my, the lips work. Oh my gosh. My heart is like, you actually scared me when I turned around. I was like, who is here? <laughs> oh, I was. <coughs> okay. <clears throat> it's the first time on camera. I'm going to have to take a drink. Oh my god. Well, besides, you scared me. You surprised me. That is hilarious. I love the lips. My favorite I, part. I saw people like at the end I kept seeing like Mario Mario and I was like no Mario didn't make anything <laughs> <laughs> that is oh I I I mean I'm not gonna like I figured he had to be up to something that shirt. what is that it's my lumberjack shirt that look at that axe look at that axe that's hilarious that's one of those t-shirts. Yeah. Oh my gosh. See, that's, this is his, this is Mario's creative contribution to new color. This I have to it. say, this is like, <laughs> I he obviously didn't do it for everyone. You did get me in Uncharted. You got me at Kitsch, but yeah, that's classic. Well, it doesn't work for all the Can you even breathe through that thing? I can't. Does it have a mouth hole? Look, see? <laughs> it's perfect for the lips. That's gonna be warm in the winter, huh? Uh, no, I'm good. But that's that is really that's pretty funny. That's no, classic. Like is it attached today. to the hat? Yeah. Oh my word. It's Velcro. It is. That is. Look. That is brilliant. He's so funny. See, that's just what he does. Look at him. Look at that smile. Oh my gosh. If I was wearing that, I do love that jacket. We got those it's last year. I do. Uh, it's it's not. I do love that. That was good. Okay. You got me. That was. That was the best one because no, like normally I know that I kind of end it. I, I come here and I'll talk and he's not around and I'm like, oh, he's up to something. So, okay, oh, so <clears throat> that was really good. That was You'll perfect. have to watch back towards the <clears throat> end when you were talking about policing. Yes. There's an Easter egg in there. There's an Easter egg. Yeah. Okay. That would be me. Oh. Oh, did you? You'll see. Oh. <laughs> did you go in? Did you go on camera? <laughs> You had to do something because really I'm I'm demoing and everyone's like Mario Mario and I'm like oh. no the, Mario did not make this this is Stacy Sharon Paula Zoe oh okay. my gosh <clears throat> okay that that's epic I right, don't know stay here that stay, that's good people love that 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 you pulled off lumberjack that's really good that is this is lumberjack plaid see it's the whole feel I told you, when he gets in front of a camera, he's like one of those kids where he just likes to see himself, and it's hilarious. That's a really cool bearded thing. Yeah, you're I welcome. think that's good. Um, yeah, L lumberjack plaid, man. That's, that is that is epic. That is epic. You, I, I had to hide it from you. You were super. Well, yeah, but that yeah, that's priceless. I gotta say, that is a good one. He, that is his contribution. So I, yeah, I don't know. I, I have to say, I don't know what you're gonna do for the other colors, because I, I will say this. Uh, I I love just continue, just I love the excitement of a new color. I really do. I love the anticipation of it. I I applaud all of you guys for supporting and celebrating the new color because it is so. It's just a fun thing to do. Um, it's been nice that we've done this. I think it's going on like two years now. Although we were, I think we were designing all the new colors and launching them over. Maybe it's even longer than that. Um, but we still have two new colors to go. And those new colors are going to be in 2023. Uh, the, the last two colors that we're going to, to do, <laughs> Vicky said this is going in her December album. It's so, it's so good. Honestly, my heart is calmed down because I turned around and I didn't recognize who this person was <laughs> in my space. And it was, it was so good. Um, so yes, we have, we have two more colors that we're going to be doing uh, next year. I don't know what he's going to be doing for that, but but I, nice. isn't that cool? It's it's, okay. it's way better scale than the one on your shirt. I've got to I got to tell you that. So when when Ranger does these colors, you know I I've already planned out the colors. When when we did new colors, it's not something that I kind of figure out as we go. And I've had conversations about this before because we've had like the never ending discussion of like why there won't be a new uh, yellow in in this release. But I have seen that over the course of two years, it's it's built up this kind of momentum in new color. And again, I'm incredibly grateful for uh, the excitement that you guys share and many of you buy it sight unseen. And while I love the anticipation and excitement of that, it makes me a little anxious. I'm not gonna be, I'm not gonna lie because I think what if you hate the color? So I am gonna give you a little spoiler on the last two. 
just in case you wanna know. I'm not gonna tell you what they are, but I'm gonna tell you something about them because when I did this palette of 12, when Ranger said I could uh, do 12 more colors, which I was super happy about, I already had them planned out and I already had them planned out as when I wanted to do them. The only exception was obviously switching uh, Villainous Potion and Lumberjack Plaid. Those were switched because Villainous would have happened this year, Lumberjack was last year, but I already covered that. But the last two colors I will say are Tim colors. So the spoiler is the last two colors are neutrals. They are neutrals. And I, I think that I, I felt compelled to say that because for those that buy it sight unseen, I don't want you disappointed that they're not a, a bright something of something, right? I've, I've done 10 of those. I've done 10 absolutely beautiful colors uh, that we've added to the distress line. And to me, these neutrals are equally as beautiful and equally as necessary to the line. But I felt that I wanted to say that because I know some people just don't work in that at all. Um, and if they, if they don't, I didn't want you just to say, oh, I'm gonna buy the next color and then be disappointed. So at least by saying that, I feel good about it now and I won't stress uh, into next year about what, you know, people being disappointed. Me, I'm most excited about the last two colors because they have been the two colors that I really wanted to the line. And I know people would disagree and go, I don't think we really need that, but we do. Um, when you, when you see those- costume colors? See, that's the thing. I don't know about Ooh. that. I don't know how you're gonna pull this one off, but it's, it's, gonna, be, it's gonna be interesting just to have some, uh, some neutrals. Anyway, uh, so with that, I think that the, the whole fun of having new color and adding new color, <laughs> adding new color to the line <laughs> Is, is just really a, a great way to always, I think also talk about the different products. Because for example, embossing glaze, there's so many great makes done with embossing glaze that that's a product that maybe doesn't get used all the time in every single release. But when you see it, it, it brings a level of education. And that's what I've always said to Ranger as well about doing new color this way, that by doing new color and doing new color in all the different mediums, it does allow as a designer to talk about all the different mediums. Because if you think about it now, I think last time I counted, there are 10 different mediums in the world of distress. Well, not necessarily totally different, but it's like ink pad, reinker, oxide, oxide reinker, spray stain, oxide spray, uh, paint, glaze, crayon, and now watercolor pencil, right? So when you think about that and you think of all those different mediums, obviously there's, there's a different timeline between uh, the crayons and the pencils, they have to just be developed a little different, but I love the fact that uh, by doing new color in all the different mediums, it allows us to really focus on those different products and their properties. And the makers, again, Tapala, Stacy, Sharon, and, and Zoe Hillman, just amazing job of that because think about that. They, all they have to go on is a color. They have no other thing, no other, other guidelines other than their style and that color and to see them embrace all those different mediums, which I know they don't know all work with, right? Sometimes they just, they like to do ink or they like to do this, but when it comes to new color, they really have to kind of dig deep and, and their, their objective is to use all these different mediums in their style. And I applaud that because I do think that as, as viewers, as makers, seeing how those different products work, maybe this isn't your color. Maybe you're still not a fan of red, but maybe watching this live, you were able to learn the property of a product to say, oh my gosh, I need to go try that with Uncharted Mariner or Kitsch Flamingo or whatever that is. And yes, they work incredibly well with the other colors uh, and I do love that. Someone said, is this gonna be like the final, final part of the palette? Well, it's the final part that's planned unless Ranger allows me to do more new colors. I'm certainly not short color ideas, um, but that, that's gonna totally be up to Ranger and whether they want more colors off of that because I think when we do the the final two will be at 72 for the palette of distress, uh, not including pick a fence and the metallic. So, but yeah, I think that's beautiful. But to me, there's always room for colors, right? Am I right? Anyway. I just need uh, to know the names. So, yeah, I know Mario's like, <laughs> now, now I'm probably gonna like, really only have those new color meetings when, no, kidding. I, I, love what, I love what you do. I think it's really, it's fun. It is fun. I, I don't know how you surprise me like you do, but but that's, well, this one because I love we that. have spirit store here. This so one, this you, one, because I, you know, normally Amazon, I got to try to get to it before you do. Yeah, well, last time you did Harbor Freight, so see, there was, was even easy. there was but even spirit that. Spirit was good. Uh, oh, I thought Zoe's like, let's make it an even eighty. I, well, I would want to probably do it in uh, in twelve, just because I think tens. But anyway, or maybe we just do eleven, just to be fun. 
or maybe we do a big success. I don't know. Anyway, uh, with that, uh, let's see. Let's see. I, I see a lot of people saying that they, they want more than that makes me happy that you want more than two. I, I, I never tire, oh, but I, Carrie doesn't I, I like think, my hat. I think it's, um, oh, I love it. I think it's wonderful. I'm going to wear it all day. Yeah. I think it's hilarious. I think it's, that's what's Aww. great about you. It's super fun. Um, oh, and see new colors. Let's see. Okay. Yeah. I'll keep going with that. Uh, I hope you guys have a great rest of your weekend. I hope you love lumberjack plaid for those that ordered it, for those that get it, I love it. Uh, for, I absolutely love it. I love your outfit. I think it's yeah. great. And I think that the, the color in your seasonal makes, especially if you are just getting started in your seasonal makes, it is a great addition uh, to the world of distress. I couldn't be happier for it. I love the name because to me, like that is that I just see that. And especially this time of year, it's just really, really, really good. Uh, oh, thanks, Mel. Yep. Encouragement from compartmental making is change your creative life. I, I completely agree. Um, and it's changed mine because I, I used to get really discouraged because I never had time to do what I wanted to do in one sitting. And after dealing with that for months and years, it was like, okay, well then what, what are you going to do? Not make again because you don't have time to do what you want to do, like figure it out. And so the whole idea was about, okay, just do what you can do and see if it can come together in the end. Is it going to be too fragmented to where by the time you're done, you don't even know what you're going to do with it. And I've kind of found that it's a little really bit it out, system. Yeah. yeah. And that you really take the opportunity. Like you don't, you don't scoff at 15 minutes. You're like, I got 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Like, where do you see what I can do? I can die cut a bunch of stuff in no time. So uh, that's helped me just in my business life, like in between meetings and stuff that I'm still able to do stuff that I want to do. So, oh, thanks. Thanks for the kind words. It's been a great, it's a, been a great live season, hasn't it? Yeah, it's, been. it's been a lot of fun. I know it's been uh, work. Shout out to all the makers that have made all year uh, and all season. It, it's been, couldn't it's been it quite a whirlwind. Definitely couldn't. And I think that the fact that we still have November and December to, to celebrate the creative side of it and Halloween is Monday, right? Oh my gosh. See, Look, I'm even ready for Halloween. I didn't think about that. I got nowhere to go, but I'm yeah. ready. <laughs> you are ready. Uh, anyway, it's just been, it's been a lot of fun and I appreciate all you guys showing up to the lives and celebrating because there is something fun about just being part of the live. Uh, I know you can watch these on replay, but the, it's fun to just see your excitement firsthand. And I, I found that going and looking at the videos, I say a lot of the same things a lot. I say, right. A lot. Right. Right. But, but what it I is, know why. it's that I'm used to engaging like with someone on the other side of a demo table where I would hear it like a, that's cool or ah, right. like, so I think I'm just doing it just to make sure like, it's cool, right? Yeah. You okay. You have to do it because you're basically, you Talk, know, like I'm talking to the voice in my head. Exactly. And I think that, and, and I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. I'm okay. I, the voices I in my head, they know me. To they, yourself. they have I mean, good ideas. It is challenging sometimes right. to, but I, I like it. And I demoing think. to me, that's like demoing to That's yourself. right. Well, I don't know. It could give you custom ideas now. So, mm -hmm. so there is that. Um, Anyway, so the, the blog, the blog post will go up shortly. The flat lay, definitely check out the flat oh lay. Oh my gosh, the flat If you don't know what the flat lays are, if maybe it's your first new color, flat lays are where um, I collect a lot of vintage things once I know the new color that kind of have the, the same color or the same theme. Uh, and sometimes I'll get like, this time I got a little creative contribution from Paula. She sent me a few trinkets, uh, but a lot of throughout the times, like, you know, Stacy sent me stuff. It just depends on what it is. This one, I had a, a really strong vision for that and I love how it turned out. So that will be on social and I hope you guys uh, check it out. I love to share those. Awesome it's, it's just really, it's, it's good fun to have uh, that flat lay there. Also, just a reminder on YouTube, uh, we've really been working on YouTube to kind of clean up the YouTube channel uh, in a sense of taking a lot of lives that we've done and adding timestamps to them. If you're not familiar with what a timestamp is, it's where if you look in the description right under the video, you'll see these little times with a title and what that allows us to do, and thanks to Julie for uh, helping me with these, is it allows you to go to videos that I've done in the past, live videos, and scroll down through the topics. So if you're looking for a specific topic, like when did he talk about glazing, or when did he, like in the case of say Stampers Anonymous, uh, I just wanna see the makes for festive collage. You could go to that live, scroll down to the description box, look at the timestamp, and it'll say festive collage makes. You click on that timestamp, and it takes you right to that part of the video. So you don't have to forward through it. You don't have to do any of that stuff. It just, it makes those lives that are often hours long a little bit more efficient. So once we, and we always trim out this intro and outro in all the lives, it's just what I've learned from YouTube that it, it doesn't need to be there. So 
uh, usually following the lives, what I'm talking about right now and what I said at the beginning, it gets trimmed out because that's why you watch live because you want to hear me babble. Um, but the timestamps have been really good. So we've, we've managed to go through all of Halloween this year, all of Christmas, and we're actually going into the Christmas uh, demos that we did last year as well, uh, which were a, a great demo series that we did for four weeks in November last year that have just great, great demos that you can click through. So definitely check out the timestamps. Don't just go to, to YouTube and assume, because I, I often I don't read the description box either, but I kind of put two little blue uh, arrow icons there. So you click show more and you'll see the whole lineup. So maybe you want to just learn about the product. Maybe you want to see the makes or maybe you want to see a demo. Everything is actually categorized by a specific topic of whether it's a make, a demo, or just a product overview. So I hope you find those helpful and we'll continue to work back through the videos and we will be doing that on all the videos moving forward. Um, it, it can't happen instant. Timestamps usually can't happen for at least 48 to 72 hours because YouTube has to process it for closed captioning and all that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really good. So uh, thanks Julie for your time in that and, and thanks for, uh, for kind of really pushing me to do that. Also, as you go out and share on social media, the Timbalt Addicts have been sharing so many amazing makes. Uh, I don't engage much on Facebook, I'll be honest, but definitely check out uh, the Addicts group if you want to, to share a lot of your makes. I live in the Instagram world, so if you share your makes on Instagram, be sure to, to tag me, at Tim underscore Holtz, uh, on your photo. You don't have to actually put it in your post. I, I don't expect you to put my name there, but if you tag me on the photo, or even if you do the hashtag Tim Holtz, it just allows me to kind of uh, engage with that. Oh, thanks, you guys. Thanks, Tifa. Um, thanks. Yeah, I know. It's, there's so much inspiration, I think, this time of year more than anything. It is good to have that encouragement. I think the addict groups provide that. I think having the efficiency of the YouTube videos is going to be good to go back and watch old ones. Uh, but also engaging on Instagram is good. I love to share in my stories. I often kind of curate little uh, collections and then I'll blast them out in a specific day because I think if you can see inspiration in repetition, it kind of clicks a little bit more, at least for me. Um, so there's, there's still going to be some fun things to come. So done enough babbling, done enough uh, fun. So it's really, it's really been a great, I'm so happy. I'm so relieved to have this color out because I've wanted this color for two years. And it seems crazy to want a red for two years, but when you're making for the holidays, you'll see. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, fam. Uh, I appreciate you guys very much. And thanks for always uh, giving time out of your weekend to, to join us in the lives. It's been good fun. And he might keep this on all day because normally he's already kind of disassembled his outfit in some capacity. I think this is your jam. It'll, yeah, it'll definitely keep him warm throughout the winter season. Really, really good. All right. Thanks, you guys. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Have a great weekend, you guys. Bye, everyone.